at least hear me out, okay? You can yell at me later. So, difficulty is a bit of a touchy subject with the overgrown 12-year-olds that have built their entire sense of identity around media consumption, but there are also a lot of pretentious snobs running around who fancy themselves as having advanced beyond the conversations that have advanced beyond the conversations about graphics and gameplay, and they tend to push difficulty as an issue of accessibility. I have, however, advanced beyond those conversations. But yeah, they're right. The difficulty is a 100% an accessibility issue, don't even get me started. It's not the angle I wanted to look at this from, though. A thing you may or may not have noticed about Uncharted, or indeed any 7th generation cover shooter, is that purely in terms of shooting, you know, the main thing you'd think you'd be doing in a shooter, a lot of these games aren't very fun to play. There's a great video by Turbo Button that goes into a bit more detail on the hows and the whys. In fact, he touches on the main point about difficulty that I'm building up to, so just ignore that, okay? I promise I came up with it independently. This is not plagiarism. My ideas just aren't very original. The short version is that the way these games built their combat around cover mechanics often meant that you spent the vast majority of your time hiding behind a bit of wall, waiting, and waiting. The whole thing was just kind of slow and static in the way that you wouldn't expect from a series that markets itself on the sheer amount of explosive bombast that Uncharted does, but yeah, cover shooters I guess. It was a big industry trend at the time, which probably sounds really weird to anyone used to how modern shooters tend to emphasize mobility and vertical level design, but... So yeah, I guess the combat bits in Uncharted are a bit shit, however... They're also not. Like, the thing about this thing is that the whole thing is actually a fairly well-designed thing. I'm serious. There's quite a lot going on here with how the individual parts come together. That makes for a pretty good system, or at least it does on paper. All the individual bits are on point. The combat mechanics, the game feel, the encounter design, although yeah, I'll get back to that one. And for as much time as you end up spending in cover, it's pretty clear that the designers were at least trying to get you to come out every now and then. Uh, the way the game keeps spamming grenades at you is just one example, but there's also other neat touches. Like, you know how in the first game all the enemies are spaghetti people with the tendency to noodle their way around your shots the last second? Wouldn't it be great if you had the option to run out of cover and punch them right in the meatballs when you inevitably lost patience. I mean, there's a punch button, like, right there, and given that it gets more attention than taking cover and shooting do in the tutorial, one would assume that the devs wanted you to, you know, press it every now and then. But chances are you won't press it because they've also filled the air with bullets and made it so that leaving cover for more than a few seconds is a really bad idea. This is not to say that you can't do that, it's just that you most likely won't. It's usually just not worth the risk. Even the grenade spamming thing, instead of pushing you forward, just momentarily shifts your priorities towards finding another bit of cover before the air kills you. And then you're back to waiting. And waiting. So in order to fix this, we are going to do the thing that's going to cause more angry comments than anything else I could have possibly said in this entire video. We're going to lower the difficulty. Dun, dun, dun. I guess I'm not a real gamer either. Which is kind of a relief to be honest. One thing you'll notice kind of immediately is that the game feel suddenly gets much better. The enemies, at least in the first three games, can be annoyingly spongy unless you go for head- unless- unless you- unless you go for headshots. So now that shooting center mass actually registers to these Randian superhumans as wounds, the guns get to feel a lot more powerful. The other thing is that your window for surviving outside of cover is now a lot longer. Now you could just think of that in terms of having a bigger health bar making for an overall easier game, but it goes a lot further than that. For one, it completely transforms the play conditioning. Look, this channel is already a bargain bin H bomber guy ripoff, complete with me copying his release schedule, so I might as well steal his ideas too. Please don't call the police. 
So plate conditioning then, or as I like to call it, the Brewis effect. Uh, refers to the way small design decisions can compound in unexpected ways with huge ripple effects on how the player might end up approaching the whole thing. Hagebomb then takes that idea and goes off to talk about shields for two hours. He never explicitly connects it to difficulty. In a video about Bloodborne of all things, which on reflection was probably a good move, no one should ever talk about Souls games and difficulty ever again. But it would be a mistake to assume that difficulty is somehow divorced from play conditioning. There is no reason to think of it as being different from other design decisions. There is no checkbox in game engines that lets developers make their games automatically easier or harder. What difficulty is, is a complex web of small design decisions made with the goal of making the game easier or harder. One that can compound in unexpected ways with huge ripple effects on how the players might end up approaching the whole thing. Which you may have noticed is how I described play conditioning in the previous paragraph. I'm a lot of things, uh, subtle isn't one of them. And those decisions did compound in Uncharted. At some point the devs have arrived at what they believed was the exact right amount of challenge they wanted the game to present by default. They probably had very good reasons to believe that too, but all the little variables they had tweaked that arrived at that result ended up pushing players to spend most of their time sitting behind cover, waiting. I don't place too much blame on the devs for this. Design is hard, okay? There's a lot of moving parts, but I do want to stress how much better the game plays on easy. Heck, it isn't even that much easier. You can still make mistakes, get cocky, overextend and pay for your hubris. It's just a different kind of difficulty, less about patience and health management and more about calculating risk, planning offensive maneuvers and knowing when to stop pushing forward. And yeah, you spend a fair bit more time out of cover. That bigger health bar gives you a lot more mobility and with it a lot more opportunities to actually use mechanics like punch people in the meatballs button, mechanics that are already there just not worth bothering with otherwise. And that way of playing is actually really fun, you know. The easy setting does a lot to improve, especially the first game. Contributes to the already excellent pacing and encounter design of the second, and as for Uncharted 3, not even the difficulty change can salvage whatever happened there, which is one of the many reasons why it's the worst game in the series. But I'll get to Uncharted 3 later. As for Uncharted 4 and Lost Legacy, I think their reworked combat system is excellent. Shut up, it is. It's good enough at least for it to be extremely boring to talk about, so I won't. In conclusion, Dark Souls should have difficulty settings. Not everyone plays games for the same reasons you do, Charlie. Get over yourself.